Hi everyone, welcome to another video for EC102. Today I'm going to cover problem set number three, question two, all about seniorage or the revenue that governments raise through the creation of money. First of all, let's just write a mathematical definition of what seniorage is. S for seniorage is always equal to, so I'm going to use three horizontal lines to denote an identity. Seniorage is always equal to how much money the government printed i.e. the change in the money supply from money printing activities divided by the price level. We divide by the price level so that we can represent seniorage in terms of an increase in the government's capacity to acquire real goods and services in the economy. So their ability to pay for roads or um, other public infrastructure projects, for example. To answer question two, part A, we're just going to simply follow the instruction to multiply and divide the expression for seniorage by M, the money supply. Let's just do that in a few different steps to make it really clear why we did this. The first step is going to be multiplying and dividing this whole term by M over M. So we can do this, of course, because m over m just equals 1, and multiplying something by 1 won't have any impact. Next, we're going to try and let the m on the denominator of this equation apply only to the change in the money supply. So our first term becomes change in money supply divided by money supply, i.e. a percentage change in the total money. We're still left with this m to be applied to the numerator of this expression, and we're going to let the m for the numerator apply to the p variable. So now we have an expression for a percentage change in the money supply multiplied by the money supply in real terms. I'm going to introduce an extra variable now just to make things a little bit easier going forward. I'm going to write small m, which just represents change in the money supply as a percentage. So this equation now becomes small m times m over p. So we're done with part one, question a, sorry, question two, part a, and uh, it'll become clear why we like to write this in terms of changes, in terms of percentage changes of the money supply multiplied by the real value of the money supply. So now we're gonna do question two, part b. The first thing to remember for question two, part B, is that whenever we're analyzing a model to do with the supply and demand of money, we should assume that the money market is always in equilibrium. So graphically speaking, we have the money supply, which is a fixed vertical line. Why? Because the interest rate doesn't have any impact on the money supply per se. The government just decides at any given moment how much money there is in the economy. Money demand can be depicted from a downward sloping curve, um, which relates the nominal interest rate in the economy to the total money demanded. In equilibrium, the money supplied equals money demanded, and we have some equilibrium interest rate. So the important thing to realize here is that whenever we're talking about the money market, we assume equilibrium and therefore MS equals MD. And we for short can just write M here. So there is only one quantity of money in the economy at a given time. And that's both going to equal money demanded and money supplied. So now let's turn to the money demand equation. What I want to do is, first of all, give money demand a functional form and just so that we can fit in nicely with the expression we got for seniorage, I'm going to write money demand in terms of the real value of all the money demanded in the economy. From the question, we're told that money demand is given by a function, L, that takes total output in the economy as one of its inputs and the nominal interest rate in the economy as one of its inputs. We know, I'll just write a little NB here, we can remind ourselves from the Fisherian identity that the nominal interest rate 
always just equals the real interest rate plus the expected inflation rate. There's a really nice video from Marginal Revolution University that I'm going to link to, which unpacks this particular equation in more detail. But for now, we're just going to take as given that we can represent the nominal interest rate in terms of the sum of the real interest rate and the expected inflation rate. So in functional notation, this now becomes a function of y. And instead of taking i as an input, it takes r plus the expected inflation rate as an input. The last thing we want to do is give this particular equation for money demand a specific mathematical form which has the properties that we would expect from um, real money demand in the terms of the behaviour we would expect individuals in the economy to exhibit. So the functional form is given in the equation, uh, is given in the question. We have y output multiplied by 1 minus nominal interest rate, which here we're expressing as the sum of the real interest rate and the expected inflation rate. So very quickly, does this have the desired properties of a money demand function? Well, we see that people demand more money when there are more goods and services in the economy. That makes sense because people want to hold more money in their pocket when they expect to be expending a greater amount of money over the course of, let's say, one year. We also see that the nominal interest rate here expressed as real plus inflationary expectations is um, decreasing the overall demand for money. So if the nominal interest rate is higher, we would expect all else equal, people are willing to hold less money because it's more attractive to be not holding money and be invested in um, the stock or the bond market where there's a nominal re return for holding those instruments as opposed to holding money. So yes, this particular, th this specific functional form for the money demand equation makes sense. Uh, and we can also verify that if we were to plot this uh, we would have a downward sloping curve just as we had in our graphical representation. So we have an equation for real money demand. We're going to assume that the money market is in equilibrium. So real money demand equals real money supplied equals just some real value of money um, in terms of M and P. Let's use equation 1 here and equation 2 here. By substituting equation 1 into equation 2, we can now get an equation for seniorage, that is in terms of the change in the nominal money supply expressed as a percentage change. Let's just put a little note over here to remind ourselves that little m equals change in money supply divided by money supply or percentage change in the money supply. We also had in equation two that seniorage was a function of real money in the economy. But we showed in equation one that real money in the economy must be defined by how much money is being demanded in the economy. So let's just substitute equation one into equation two to now write this. So we now have an expression for seniorage in terms of changes, in terms of percentage changes in the stock of money, in terms of the total number of goods and services produced or output, and in terms of the nominal interest rate expressed as the sum of the real interest rate and inflationary expectations. So from here, we can start to do some deeper analyses around how seniorage or the increase in the purchasing power of a government increases or decreases as we change the money supply. So moving on to question C or part C of question two, let's have a look now what happens when we, um, when we ascribe some values to our parameters from this particular equation. So from the question, we're told that y equals 250, we're told that r equals 0 0.05, and we're told that inflationary expectations equals 0 0.1. Putting these into the equation, we're left with s 
equals percentage change in money supply times 250 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.1. If we were to graph this equation, we see that we have an input value, percentage change in money supply, and an output value, seniorage. This particular equation can be graphed by noticing that M enters linearly. So anytime we increase the money supply, we would get higher levels of seniorage. So um, let's imagine if M equals 25%, then Using the, this equation, we can calculate that seniorage is going to equal 53.125. Likewise, if the percentage change in the money supply equaled 50% or, or, or 0.5, then just solving the equation above with these the specific values, seniorage is 106.25. Likewise, if we grow the money supply by 75%, then seniorage, the real value that governments receive from this additional money they printed, is going to be 159.375. So every time we increased the percentage change in money supply, or we turned the printing presses on for longer and longer, the government was able to capture more real value in terms of what it can do with this extra money, um, in terms of what it can buy with this extra money in the economy. If I was to graph this particular relationship, it would look something like this. Seniorage on the y-axis, growth in the money supply in percentage terms on the x-axis. We would have a relationship, Ooh, why can't I choose that, there we go, something like that. Every time we increase the percentage change in the money supply, the government is capturing a greater value in terms of the seniorage or the real purchasing power it is um, given from this extra money in its pocket. <clears throat> so what's unsatisfying about this particular equation? Why do we think that this is not a particularly well-constructed equation for how much additional value the government captures in terms of seniorage for expanding the money supply? Well, the biggest problem with this equation, I would argue, or this equation, I would argue, is that what we've done is we've chosen a fixed value for inflationary e expectations. This is unsatisfying for a few reasons, um, but the most clear reason, I think, is because we already have information about how prices will change in response to an increase in the money supply. And we can see that because we know that there's this thing called the quantity equation, which says that the money supply or the quantity of money in the economy times the velocity of money equals the price level in the economy times real goods or output in the economy. We also know that empirically, this doesn't change that much over time. This doesn't change that much over time. So if there is an increase in the quantity of money in the equation, we would expect there to be a reciprocal increase in price levels. And to the extent that people in the economy understand this relationship, we can therefore assume that people's inflationary expectations, or our expectation of how much prices rise, would be directly related to their observations about how much money growth increased. Or we would expect that inflationary expectations, roughly speaking, are going to equal the percentage change in the money supply. So if we formalize this particular equation and we let inflationary expectations exactly equal the growth rate in percentage terms of the money supply, then we have to go back and write a new equation for the seniorage value. So let's do that. Seniorage equals the total sorry, seniorage equals the percentage change in the money supply or how much we printed as a proportion of how much money existed currently multiplied by all the goods and services in the economy in real terms or the output 
multiplied by 1 minus the nominal interest rate, which is here described by the real interest rate, plus previously we said this was inflationary expectations. But from the quantity theory of money, we know that inflationary expectations should, in general, be equal to the growth in the money supply or percentage growth in money supply. So we have a new equation for seniorage, which now has M, the percentage change in the money supply, showing up in two different places. And in fact, we can see that these two effects are contradictory because as M goes up here, we expect seniorage to go up. But as M goes up here, we would expect seniorage to go down. So clearly there's going to be some relationship that is non-linear that shows how when money supply increases in percentage terms, seniorage either increases or decreases um, depending on the parameter values of our model. Now, actually, I've gone ahead and plotted this using Wolfram Alpha. So here we have seniorage S. Here we have growth in the money supply in percentage terms or uh, delta M over M. And we see here from this graph that initially as growth in the money supply or the printing of money increases, we have an increase in seniorage. Then we get to a particular point here. And if we keep increasing the percentage growth in the money supply, then our seniorage continues to drop. So let's just have a quick think about why this is. Well, there are two effects here that are driving seniorage. The first is that as we print money, we put more in the government's pocket and that increases the government's ability to purchase real goods and services. So there is some positive impact in terms of the seniorage value um, ascribed to expanding the money supply. But of course, because people base their inflationary expectations on how much money is being printed, we also have this problem of making the money that we print and put in our pockets worth less because the price level in the economy is rising. So we're putting more and more money in our pocket, but what we're also doing is we're making that money worth less and less and less because as we print more, we, def we inflate prices and we make money worth less in terms of real goods and services. In order to find the point at which we have maximized our seniorage value, <clears throat> We can see here that at that point, the instantaneous rate of change or the derivative is equal to zero. So we can use calculus here to find an exact value for small m that maximizes seniorage. The way that we can do that, I'll just do that over here, is by taking the derivative of our seniorage equation with respect to m. We take the derivative of s with respect to small m, which is going to give us <clears throat> y minus y r minus y 2m set that equal to zero. Solving for this, we then find that the optimal value of small m is 0 0.475. I'll leave that as an exercise for you to go into it in more detail. Uh, but essentially, all, all we're trying to do is impose that the derivative or the rate of change of this function is zero. And we know that at that point, we have necessarily maximized S. So the M that pertains to a rate of change or derivative equal to zero must be the M that maximizes S. I wanted to show you one more thing before we push on, or before we finish, is... And the thing that I wanted to show you is the possibility that perhaps people's inflationary expectations or how much they expect prices to go up by may actually not be exactly equal to money growth in a percentage terms. Let's say, for example, people overreact to the printing of money. 
if, for example, every time money supply expansion in percentage terms went up by one percentage point, we would then have inflationary expectations going up by 1.5 percentage points. That's going to have a real impact on this relationship between money and seniorage. Here, actually I've done it for 1.3 here. So here we see that if I was to graph the new seniorage curve where inflationary expectations equaled 1.3 times percentage change in the money supply, what we have is a new curve that for any given level of seniorage, sorry, for any given level of money supply growth gives us less seniorage. We also see that the maximum point of seniorage is obtained at a lower money growth rate. And in general, the curve is kind of shifted towards the origin. So this thing is gonna play a really important role in how seniorage um, is, how seniorage responds to changes, to percentage changes in money. But that's all I wanna to cover today. Um, I hope that this video has been somewhat helpful. Uh, if you need more help, then obviously you can always come and speak to your class teacher. Um, but look out for a few more videos and please have a look at the video that talks about the quantity theory of money. That's a video done by Marginal University or Marginal Revolution University. Um, and uh, look out for another video or another two videos from me in the com next couple of hours uh, or perhaps tomorrow morning. Fantastic. Thanks everyone.